Hey guys, welcome back. Billy Irwin, IAG, step 3B. Quick recap on 3A, uh, and the reason we did 3A was the why, like why are we gonna do all this in the first place? Uh, the recap was we're paying a 13% tax, if you will, to Medicare. We're paying another 4% tax to uncompensated care. These are the folks that, that can't afford it. In the end, we paid and we demonstrated that we paid a 57 on average 57 percent profit margin to the hospital groups 57 percent. so if that's not motivation you probably don't want to be watching this honestly um so now let's get into okay what do we do about this how do we not end up in that trap right so in general theory of insurance it, as a customer we want to keep all the good risks and shift all either the bad risks that we have or the stuff we can't control catastrophic stuff you know like COVID, when that hit, and, and earthquakes on a PNC side, fire, that sort of stuff that would completely wipe out the business, you actually need help with that, right? You can't you know, afford that on your own, basically. So, so what is good, what's bad? Anything insurance-wise, it's always gonna come back to the bell curve. So, and I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times. In health insurance, let's call this a 70 loss ratio. Let, let's call it the average. Um, don't, and I'll talk about, hey, is it 85, and is the MLR, and all that stuff in a minute. But let, let's call it a 70 for now. I wanna be reasonably sure. I wanna be 95% sure that as I'm forecasting and budgeting for next year, that my loss ratio for my plan of, of employees is gonna be somewhere about a 70. So that's gonna say, if I'm 95% sure, then have about a two and a half percent chance I end up say over an 85 or under a 55 and you know which way that thing will land by the way so that's a little skewed to this but keep it simple uh, let's say we're gonna plan for a 70 okay great you know so so how do how much data do I need to get I only got 50 people in my my group you know um, the actuarially speaking we need 2,000 life years And we also need 2,000 claims. So what's a life year? A life year is basically one person on my plan for one year. So I can observe them over a year's worth of time. If I have 2,000 people on a plan in two years, eh, I can be 95% sure that's gonna be where I'm gonna end up next year. You know, that's what I can budget for. I also need 2,000 claims. That includes dependents and everybody else. So two and two. Um, now let's say, would be able to build, I only have 50 people in my group, it's gonna take me forever to get that kind of data. Well, what we do, it's called actuarial credibility. Um, guys guys that we work with, phenomenal, sharp, sharp data guys at, at Milliman and, and Pear Knight, kudos to them, uh, they have phenomenal data. So, so they, and they have millions, literally millions and millions of life years to look at. So, you know, what we can do is let's say, hey, you know, we have half of this, we have one in one you know, a thousand live years and a thousand claims. So what you do is you just go 50% time, let's say we did great, we ran a 60, and then, you know, on a loss ratio, and then say, but the actuarial, you know, after a couple million lives and claims and so forth, that's gonna be a 70. So I'm gonna go 50% um, sure I'm gonna end up here, then I'm another 50% sure I'm gonna end up, you know, near the credibility, the number that has credibility. So on average, I should do my budget for a 65. Those can be all over the place. There's different, you know, different numbers that you're gonna need for mean and variance and all this kind of stuff, but, but you don't need to worry about that. That's our job. Let's, let's say for now, to keep it simple, we, we wanna plan for a 70 loss ratio. Okay, how do I get my data? I need to start somewhere, you know, and just a second to pause. The, and this, <laughs> this is for my friends, the guys that I hang out with and joke around with and my competitors, if we're competitors and colleagues, I mean, we all talk, right? And I tell them this, you know, and, and although they're my competitors, like, guys, you're wrong. You know, the biggest misconception out there is that we need 500 lives, you know, to start getting the data from the carriers. No, you, we even, you, need, you, need at least, you need at least 100 lives to get the data from the carriers. No, <laughs> you know, three years ago, the last time you looked at it, you know, now your, your golf score is a lot better than mine, you, you know, but again, just teasing you guys. But, you know, so so you need that data, right? You know, so I, it's a the it drives me nuts. We only need twenty five lives. We have TPAs right now. So how do we get this data? Sorry, tangent. Pardon me. Um, how do we get this data? 
So we need 25 laps, not 100, certainly nowhere near 500, um, to actually go back. If you're with in California, now this is changing by the month. It's hard for me to keep up with it, you know, and I tease my guys. It, it's changing by the month. And, and by the end of, I would say by the end of next year, we'll have it for everybody, you know. But we can go back through our TPAs. If you're in California, if you're with Kaiser or Anthem right now, I can get you five years of health history for every employee, every dependent, every spouse on the planet with one click. Now those HIPAA require, HIPAA, easy to say, HIPAA requirements um, that you need to you know, adhere to and so one click. One click, I get the authorization. I can pull five years of health, everything. Uh, you know, everything, dental, I can pull PBM, I can pull scripts. One thing, and this is called, and, and Lord knows I got my beef with California, but this is called the California Inter, you can Google it on it, Google California Interoperability. Like one of those long German words. Uh, so it, it's a very fancy word of saying the systems talk to each other. You know, so you can essentially where this came from is I want to be able to walk into my doctor and instead of filling out the same form 15 times every time I go to another doctor, I can give them a QR code in my phone and they have my entire his health history there. It's uploaded. They have it. They see everything. That's it. You know, so, so this is a phenomenal thing. Medicare is also doing a CMS is also getting there. You know, they're they're behind. But by the end, I'd say by the end of 2024, this is going to be almost all the big guys on there now, you know, so, but we can get you five years of data with 25 people, 25, not a hundred, not 500. I can get you five years of data right now. You know what your loss ratio is going to be, right? Then you wait it out. We can get the credibility stuff from our vendors, you know, in Milliman again, and those guys, we know exactly where this should be. There, it, it's business. It's data driven decisions which is how most of you guys are very successful, run your business in, in whatever you do best. You know how to tweak that, you know how to run that. This is what we do. We get after this data and we, we cut through the noise and we make darn sure if you got 25 people or more, I can tell you almost exactly where your loss ratio is gonna be. And then we can take steps to mitigate that. Now, one more thing, so if, if, you, if you don't have 25 people, um, and, and you're not on Kaiser Anthem, you can get that data going forward, and that's a traditional, well, we can look at level funded. Uh, now, starting 1-1, one, one, it's about an 80%, 90% chance of this happening. Starting 1-1, one, one, we have a secondary insurance plan that we can bolt on top of your fully insured plan and start getting you data going forward, even if you're fully insured. Amazing, right? Um, so for folks on that plan, I can tell you what your loss ratio is. It's invaluable information. Then you can actually start managing this business. Right now you got data to make decisions on. And you don't need to look at, you don't need to ask me. You can look at the, at the, at the charts, look at the Excel sheets and figure it out yourself. You know, um, I watch your blind spots. You know, that, that's my job. And that's it guys. You know, I mean, um, you know, there, there's, and, uh, and just real quick, I don't want the IT guys to yell at me because the video is too long. Uh, I'll get I'll get comments saying mobile is an 85, you know, mandated loss ratio. Um, there's so many ways. Around. This is another thing goes back to how how you get ripped off and how you end up spending 57 percent on on at the facility. Oh, the carriers, you know, have to you know pay 85 percent out in, in losses, right? <laughs> They are brilliant people, right? So look at, not to pick on, on UHC, but look at United Healthcare. United Healthcare is owned by United Health Group. United Health Group, we have Group? <laughs> I did say that. United Health Group owns United Healthcare, which can say, okay, they're gonna make 15% on it. You know, this is the insurance side. But they're not going to send the claims out. They're not going to send, you know, dictate the claims out to everybody, to mom and pop physician. They're going to send it to Optum. Optum, which is also owned by United Health Group, they can charge whatever they want. They're not locked into this 85. So in the end, they're still going to get their money. They're going to pay you maybe 70, maybe, you know, by the time their cost of business, maybe they're going to pay out a 55 loss ratio. And, it's, and not to pick out on UHC, everybody does this. Cigna, this, this year, 2023, now it's Cigna Health Group. Cigna Health Group owns Cigna Health 
care, the insurance company, 85 loss ratio. They also own Evernorth. Evernorth is the hospitals. Everybody does it. Aetna is owned by CVS. So guys, just, just please be aware of what you're doing. Please be aware of the money you're probably throwing away. Um, and, and again, let me cover this. And again, last thing I promise. What's the silver bullet for figuring out if you're probably good to go self-insured or kind of retain at risk? Age. Very easy in health. If I'm less than 45, I'm going to run about $4,000 a year. This is very well documented. If I'm 45 or less, I'm going to spend about four grand a year in my health care. If I'm 45 to 65, it's double. I'm going to spend eight. If I'm 65 plus, I'm spending 18. So the first thing I talk about, you know, when I'm talking to folks who's looking at taking action on their plans, other than, you know, the first thing I talk about is age. How old is your employee base? You know, if they're 55, you want to stick to fully insured and you want to bolt on a secondary insurance plan. It, it, it just for, it, because, it, let's say worst case, I'm 55, 60 average age. Um, I probably don't want to retain at risk. I'm over here. My loss ratio is going to end up in here. I want, to, I want to shift that, right? I want to send that to the carriers, let them deal with it, right? I don't want to retain that risk. However, I do want to take action. I want to go fully insured. I want to have secondary insurance plans in place so I can raise my deductibles, still like we covered last time in the very beginning, raise my deductibles, and then let the secondary insurance plan absorb that difference in deductible. My loss ratio, I can sleep at night. I don't have to worry about it over here. Um, that's it, guys. I know this is a ton. Um, reach out to me. Happy to help. You need questions. Uh, happy to help. I'm privileged to be here. Thank you. Bye.